Could you tell me why in our profession of faith and the creed, of course we do the creed at mass, we don't profess our belief in the real presence of the body and blood of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. This is from DK from Norwalk, Connecticut, no relationship to me. Uh, but, you know, we say that mm -hmm. the creed, is there some reason why the Eucharistic self mm -hmm. and the real presence isn't in the creed? Yeah, um, because I don't really think it was ever a matter of controversy. Remember how, you know, most dogmas, creedal dogmas, get defined, frankly, because there's some kind of a fight, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, we, you know, some heretic comes along and starts doing something, and then the church council has to resolve this thing by condemning the heretic and proclaiming dogma by what we call de fide definitum. So, you know, essentially defining a dogma, uh, you know, as, as the truth of the Catholic faith. Now, the, the vast majority of the creedal statements that we have, right, um, you know, concern, first of all, God the Father, God the Son, specifically the events in his life all the way through his resurrection, then God the Holy Spirit, then the Catholic Church in general. And so when we talk about the Catholic Church, we're already including all of the sacraments. They don't detail all the sacraments in there. Then, of course, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. And, of course, we, we, there, there's really a creed as a general general mm -hmm. statement of the belief. And so, you know, it's not that the Eucharist is minor. It, it, mm -hmm. it isn't minor. It's hugely major to the spiritual life. But, you, you know, if you are going to define uh, the vast majority of uh, dogmas, as you probably have seen, Denzinger Schönmetzer's Enchiridion Symbolorum Indulgentium, right? This big, huge 500, 600 page book. You know, you can't put that all mm -hmm. in the creed. We'd never get past it, you know, after two hours hours and the mass would be quite right, lengthy. That's true. So right, what right, we, right. the creed is, yeah, so we basically put it into, we take the most important doctrines with respect to God and we spe specify those areas of the doctrines where there was what we might call a super heresy, mm -hmm. like the Arian heresy or the monophysite heresy mm -hmm. or something like that. And so we're talking about various aspects which of Christological heresies, things that have been resolved, and then the rest of these things are very general. The Holy Catholic right. Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting, period. Okay. You, you put an end to it, as it were, you know, because otherwise you would be uh, right. talking for a very so, long time about each of the sacraments right. and so forth. Right, and, and then people yeah. would say, why isn't that included? So, and then it becomes this idea yep. that because it's not mentioned, it's not important. Uh, let me ask you yeah. just to, to dovetail mm -hmm. off of that comment. If we, if you were, if we were mm -hmm. had the creed today and we were looking at it, and we were saying, like as you said, that it has to do with dealing with the great heresies of different periods of time in the church, what would you see today mm -hmm. in your experience? And we've talked on other programs. Is the greatest, let's say, heresy facing the church today? Is there one you'd pick out? Uh, I think. Well, the first, of course, is. You know, we, we deal with a lot of materialism. But the, the thing is, is that, if I can put it that way, is a cultural heresy more than it is a heresy within the church. Okay. So in other words, uh, w what you're dealing with is something from the outside that, that's trying to affect the inside of the church and has in many uh, respects, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, really persuaded youth to, to, to leave the church, right, because uh, young people s s seemingly believe in the materialism that they might see on the websites or, or various things, right, you know, I mean, even though Dawkins' arguments aren't worth the, the paper they're written on, mm -hmm. right, it's still, if you sucker for them and leave the church, you know, uh, you know sh chalk one up for Dawkins, mm -hmm. you know, the propaganda poor as it might be, the straw man attacks on St. Thomas Aquinas, poor as they may be, actually had a practical effect. I call those kind of a, a cultural heresy. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> materialism is certainly one, or sometimes called physicalism. But, you know, the Lord has really given us, you know, some excellent things, those, those near-death experiences 
really make it hard to be an out and out materialist. Mm -hmm. I mean, also, you know, the Shroud of Turin with all the new evidence for the resurrection and the Shroud makes it hard to just discount Jesus' resurrection entirely, you know, as a historical fact, and certainly his crucifixion as a historical fact. Mm -hmm. it, it makes it very difficult. Uh, also, with, you've got these miracles, especially the assiduous nature, which these miracles are tested, say, by the Lord's uh, medical commission. So these things are really, you know, they're almost crafted to be, you know, put out in the 20th, 21st centuries, right, so that people, mm -hmm. you know, who are being affected by this kind of new uh, atheism, new materialism, new secularism, really have a very strong leg to stand on, not uh, to mention all the physical evidence that's coming from contemporary science and the new metaphysical evidence mm -hmm. from new proofs for the existence of God. So all these things are available to us today, but still we from within the church have to resist those things. And instead of calling that really theology, uh, you know, uh, which is kind of clarifying our doctrine, we call that area apologetics. So mm -hmm. we are kind of resisting then defending the faith, de defending transcendentalism, uh, in other words, against physicalism, mm -hmm. you, know, uh, uh, you know, defending the spiritual life uh, against a, a mere physicalism. We're defending Jesus Christ as risen from the dead against those who would, you know, attack the historicity uh, of that, you know, the belief in God through the new proofs for the existence of God or science in God, et cetera, uh, you know, as opposed to uh, the new agnosticism and so forth. Hmm. That's called apologetics, but that is, to me, you know, it, it is those dangers of the fundamental doctrines, mm. that's what's killing our youth. You know, as I've said before, 1% per year. We've moved from 24% now, and the last poll I saw from the Pew survey mm -hmm. is 39% unbeliever among the young millennial generation. Yeah. So it's just like skyrocketing over the last 13 years. It's gone up more than 1% per year among the young people. And that's a, these are validated surveys that are right. constantly ongoing. So, and, and it's happening in the Catholic Church. This is not just, right. you know, among Protestants, Jews, whatever. It's, it's Catholics are getting sucked into the materialistic myth. And it is a myth. Uh, you, know, if, you know, again, please go to my website. You know, if you know a young person who's just on drift because of materialism, please go to MajaCenter.com, free videos, free articles, free everything you want, proofs of God, near-death experiences, Shroud of Turin, miracles, you name it, it's all there, mm -hmm. free of charge, on the video, on the right. articles, footnoted to the hilt. I mean, the science is all there. The math is there if you want the math. You don't have to take the math, but it's there. I mean, so please lead the horse to the water so at least he has the option right. of drinking. And anecdotally, you would think in looking at, at, the, at, at the generation we're talking about, uh, the level of depression uh, is out there no. because if you don't have something to hold on to as you go through life, you realize that these other things do not fulfill you. Oh, it's so true. Uh, you know, I've mentioned, I think, uh, in a few programs way, way back, uh, that study of Kanita uh, Dervik uh, that was done in 2004 for the American Psychiatric Association. Uh, she and uh, 14 other authors, uh, you know, put together a study that just measured one differentiating factor. So she had religiously affiliated per people versus non-religiously affiliated people. And they kind of eliminated all of the other possible causes of depression and, and you know, symptomatic uh, uh, aggression and so forth. And what they found was that those who were non-religiously affiliated, that is to say, they affiliated with no religion at all, no mm -hmm. spirituality, no nothing. They, they were kind of non-religious, non-spiritual. Mm -hmm. These people had significantly higher suicide rates, significantly higher suicide attempts, significantly higher depression and meaninglessness and despondency, mm -hmm. significantly higher impulse aggressivity, significantly higher familial tensions, and significantly higher substance abuse 
than the people who are religiously mm -hmm. affiliated. I mean, that just says it all. And by the way, there are subsequent studies that have been done that have verified the very same conclusion. Mm -hmm. Human beings are homo religiosas. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people who are meant by nature to be religious. Mm -hmm. They are called within their hearts from their very beginning there is an invitation by God. Rudolf Otto calls it the mm -hmm. numinous experience, the sense of the spiritual, the sense of the fascinating and the wonder, the mystery, the urgency, you know, that, that we feel within ourselves when we confront the holy, when we confront, uh, you know, the sacred. And, and, and of course, mm -hmm. this is present in all of us. And if we just hack our whole transcendental demeanor, right, if we just you know, decide we're not going to pay any attention to our religion, any attention to our religious nature, our mm -hmm. spiritual nature, our transcendental nature. We're just going to be good little materialists. Mm -hmm. If we do that, what we can be sure of is we'll not only be much higher in depression, meaninglessness, despair, despondency, wow. impulse, aggressivity, substance abuse, familial tensions, and suicide rates, but in addition to all of that, we're going to find that we are half people. We, no, we're tenth people. We're tenth of our dignity, tenth of our destiny, tenth of our fulfillment. We're, you know, Augustine said it perfectly <coughs> 1,600 years ago. For thou hast made us for thyself, mm -hmm. and our hearts are restless until they rest in thee. Exactly. And what he meant by that was that God gave us this desire for perfect and unconditional truth, perfect and unconditional love, perfect and unconditional goodness or justice, perfect and unconditional beauty, and perfect and unconditional home. God gave us the desire for himself. He is perfect and unconditional truth, love, goodness, beauty, and home. Only he can fulfill us. He has made us for himself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in him. And if we ignore him, we are depressed. Okay. We are empty, we are lonely, we are alienated, and as a result, we are feeling all of these crazy feelings, everything from depression to aggression, all the way to suicide.